One of the biggest questions for America is how do we heal our country and frankly repair it after Donald Trump leaves office, no matter how he leaves office. Um, some interesting thoughts on this. Check it out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, and please subscribe to our channel. How bad does it have to get? Robert Freeman asking over at Common Dreams. How bad does it have to get in the United States? And how do we, how do we heal from it after Trump leaves? I think this is a really important question and, and a consequential one. And, uh, you know, I'd like to enlist you in the brainstorming project here. Um, first of all, looking at some of the areas of extraordinary damage Trump has done. And, 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 I'm, and I'm curious what, what you think the worst kinds of damage he has done are. I mean, you, you could look at what he's done to our public lands, you know, ripping them up, tearing them apart, privatizing them, selling them off for oil and, ca and, and coal drilling. I mean, the physical, literally physical damage that he has done, uh, you know, making the environment uh, uh, dirtier, more polluted, rolling back Obama's clean air regulations on auto exhaust. It's going to lead to another 10,000 cancers a year now. So 10,000 of us are going to die every year. So that, um, and the auto industry, by the way, wasn't even asking for this. In fact, they didn't want it. But the fossil fuel industry wanted it. And what, you know, what the petrobillionaires want, Trump gives them. And, he, you know, he knows who his constituents are. And, and, and you know, this also ties into his rant on Saturday night. But uh, Robert Freeman's list, this is just, you know, some of the things that, that, you know, we need to consider when we're thinking about the Trump presidency and how we're going to, you know, what it has done to America and how we are, how, how do we best heal from this? I mean, is it is it a Truth and Reconciliation Commission? Is it just, a, you know, electing, I mean, just blowing the Republicans out politically and, you know, electing progressive Democrats? What, what steps? You know, he, this guy lost the election by three million votes and acts like he's king, like he, he was he elected with an absolute mandate. The Russians helped him get elected. Um, he provided them, or his campaign provided them, with confidential polling data to guide the Russian Facebook ad targeting, which were seen by over 100 million people, and his margin of victory in the Electoral College was 70,000 votes. He lied repeatedly, both publicly and under oath, uh, or not just him, but he, he, excuse me, he encouraged the people working for him to lie repeatedly, both publicly and under oath, about what was going on. Um, tens of millions of dollars were raised by his uh, inauguration committee that have mysteriously vanished. We don't know where that money went. He brags about groping women. He's been credibly accused of sexual assault by more than 20 women. And those are all still up in the air. He is the un unindicted co-conspirator in, in a felony to commit election finance fraud, you know, the paying off of, of uh, the, the Playboy bunny and porn star. Um, and by the way, it's a felony crime. Michael, Michael Cohen is going to prison for it. He filed for bankruptcy six times, stiffing workers, contractors, lenders for tens of millions. He hired undocumented aliens, even as he railed against a tidal wave of illegal immigrants. He inherited $413 million from his dad, and much of it uh, he got by illegal, you know, by fraud against the IRS and against you and me and the rest of the American people, and pretends that he's a self-made man and, and says that he borrowed a million dollars from his dad and paid it back. It's all lies. His charitable foundation was shut down because it wasn't a charitable foundation. It was being used to promote his business and his ego. I mean, literally, like buying, the, the foundation was buying pictures of him, paintings, portraits of him that would then hang in Trump properties. He claims he was a good student, but he threatens to sue any school that releases his grades. He claims he was a brilliant businessman, but he refuses to release any financials or taxes that might prove it or disprove it. This is again from this list that Robert Freeman put together uh, on Saturday over at Common Dreams. He says the Mueller report totally exonerates him, yet he refuses to let it, you know, he, 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 he refuses to let it be fully released. And he refuses to let critical witness t testify about it. He grossly understated the value of his assets to dodge taxes while overstating their value to secure loans. That's bank fraud and, I, and tax fraud. The Mueller report listed 10 times that he broke the law and, and said 
The only reason we're not issuing an indictment is because the guidelines of the Justice Department from the Nixon era were that you can't indict a sitting president. You have to throw that to Congress and let them decide whether or not to remove him from office. He's told over 10,000 lies since assuming office. He's a pathological liar, or in the neighborhood of 10,000 lies. His uh, bootlicking of Putin at Hel in Helsinki was just cringeworthy, uh, particularly when he said he didn't believe his own intelligence chiefs. He, he believed Putin. I would add to that his bootlicking of uh, Erdogan in Turkey and Duterte in the Philippines and Bolsonaro in Brazil. And I mean, you know, take your pick of right wing strongmen around the world. He's, he's in with them because he's one of them. He separated tens of thousands of children from their parents, put them in cages, and then lost track of them. We have no idea how many of them are the victims of human trafficking right now. He praised neo Nazi marchers in Charlottesville and then doubled down on it this last week. He told immigration officials to break the law, and by the way, if you get caught, I'll pardon you. You can't make this stuff up. I mean, this is insane. He told senior White House aides to lie to the Mueller commission. He smeared a Gold Star family whose son was killed in Iraq during the campaign. Uh, he smeared them during the campaign. He smeared John McCain. I mean, that's just kind of no more necessary there. He promised to help working men, and, uh, or the working man and woman, but immediately passed a $1.5 trillion dollar tax cut, 87% um, of which all went to billionaires and big corporations. He continues to claim he's building the wall. In fact, I got an e two emails from him last week saying, we're building the wall, Fred. Well, no, sorry, not a single new inch has been built. He promised in the campaign to protect Social Security, but two weeks ago, his budget cut Social Security, including cutting millions of seniors who are living in poverty, uh, you know, cutting their Social Security benefits. He refuses to cooperate with Congress, which is, you know, trashing the Constitution that he swore to uphold, the whole system of checks and balances. I mean, that's what makes America, America. And he's like, no, screw that. We're an autocracy now. I mean, when are the Republican congressmen going to get off their knees in front of him and stand up and start defending us? And then oh, Saturday, he goes on this long rant. It, it was his, his uh, counter-programming for the White House Correspondents' Dinner. So Fox News would have something to play for, you know, however long they did. Literally accusing mothers and doctors of executing newborn children, which is not a thing. It doesn't happen in the United States. It's called infanticide. It's illegal. And, and you know, who would do that anyway? It's, but, but he literally, he, he lays this out and says, this is what happens. He calls the media sick. This is from a piece over at Rolling Stone. He, he calls the FBI uh, officials scum. He claims credit for the idea of sending undocumented immigrants to sanctuary cities. He says, it's a sick idea. I'm proud that I came up with it. Uh, I, you know, the locker up chance, really? I mean, this is what he said. He said, the baby is born. The mother meets with the doctor. They take care of the baby. They wrap the baby beautifully. And then the mother and doctor determine whether or not they will execute the baby. He literally said this and his gullible the gullible rubes in the crowd believed it and reacted as if they believed it. I mean, this is obscene. Clint Winters in Yes Magazine is asking the question, um, what do we do after he's gone? Which is my question. How do we heal from this? How do we recover from this? I don't think America can go back. On the one hand, I, you know, we have to do something about checking presidential power. I would say step one, is to have the Justice Department throw out that memo that says you can't indict a sitting president. That's nuts. That's, that's literally saying one person in the United States is above the law. And the whole principle of American jurisprudence is that no man or woman or, or you know, them or whatever is above the law. No one. But that's just the beginning. I mean, you know, he, he has inflicted pain on these millions of children uh, through locking them up and sticking them in cages and tearing them from their parents. He's, he's, he's uh, caused indirectly the death of thousands of people in Puerto Rico by, by benign neglect. It's not even benign, by malicious neglect. He's try, he, uh, uh, one of the worst things that this guy has done is not even a specific crime you can point to. 
It's the whole tone and tenor of his administration. It started when, with literally his first speech as a candidate, tearing us apart, telling us that brown people from south of the border or the ants or the descendants of same are murderers and rapists and, and, and thieves and just terrible people, right? He's dividing us along political parties. He vilifies the Democratic Party. He, re, he, he encourages people not even to use the full name of it, the Democratic Party. Instead, he's back to Joe McCarthy's, oh, call it the Democrat Party and emphasize the rat. No, Thomas Jefferson named it the Democratic Party, and it still is named that. He's, he's dividing us among parties. He's dividing us uh, along racial lines. He's dividing us along gender lines. He's, he's dividing us along sexual orientation and expression lines. He's dividing us among classes. He's trying to tear apart Democrats uh, between Bernie, Bernie bros and Bernie, you know, never Bernie and all this kind of stuff. He's, he's, he's pitting cities against rural areas. You know, as, as Clint Winters points out, this is what autocrats do. This is what authoritarian leaders do. They, they, they rip the country into shreds. They tear people from each other. And then when there's not any large, you know, unified faction left, they pull together, you know, their little coalition of haters and weirdos and whatnot and say, these are our people, and, 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 they, and they get enough to keep themselves in power. I mean, case in point, Erdogan in Turkey. So how do, how do, we, how do we get, how do we heal from this? I mean, this, I, I think Clint, Clint Winters makes a really important point. He says, he says uh, Trump is not the cause of American society's deep wounds. He's just jamming his fingers in the, into them to make them bleed more. But clearly, our, our, vulner, our, our democracy, as Clint Winters says, was vulnerable. And, you know, if the next guy who comes along has the same mindset, the same autocratic mindset that Trump does, but unlike Trump, he's actually competent, we are in deep trouble.